Welcome everyone to the McPhail at Home co Coffee Talk. And uh, my name is Momoko Tano and I am a voice teacher at McPhail Center for Music. And today uh, we are doing a coffee talk interview with Ivory Dublet. And thank you so much for being here, Ivory. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, Ivory is a teacher at McPhail as well um, for the Sing, Play, Learn. Is That's that right? correct, yeah. And um, how long have you been doing that? So I've been teaching with Sing, Play, Learn since 2015, but I actually started in 2013 as an um, assistant teacher, so just assisting the lead. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, um, I feel like I've known Ivory for a long time and we've run into each other at, at McPhail sometimes and I, it's always a joy to see you and you so always have a very positive aura about you and I appreciate that always. <laughs> um, so um, I wanted to maybe start by asking you about um, your, so before you started teaching, um, and how about, I know you are also a singer and actor um, and have done so many musical theater and theater productions and yeah. as a theater artist. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me about how you got into acting and singing and a little bit about your, uh, where you grew up? Um, Definitely, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I was born and raised in Anchorage, Alaska, and I lived there the majority of my life until I was 15 and then moved to um, Minnesota, first Rochester, Minnesota. And there is really where I started acting. I, I sang my entire life. Um, my mom is a gospel choir director and her mom was as well. Um, and so I didn't really have a choice as far as music goes. <laughs> but the acting came later in life. My older sister was an actor and she did a lot in high school. Um, and I would go to see her plays. And I was like, I just wanna do that one day. One day I wanna do that. Well, fast forward to my senior year of high school, I got asked to be in a community um, theater production of uh, Children of Eden, um, and that is a show that's like loosely based on the beginnings of the Bible, so um, Adam and Eve, and then it goes into Noah's Ark, um, and I played the character Yona, and I had a couple big solos, and it was so crazy how much I loved it, and how much like my grades improved, because I was on a, a schedule now, and I had rehearsals, and I was taking things more seriously, and because of how much I loved it and how much I felt like I changed, I wanted to study it. So I, I came up to the Twin Cities to go to the University of Minnesota, and I majored in theater, the um, BA program in their theater arts department. Um, and yeah, from there, I just started performing in the Twin Cities and a little bit in Chicago, a little bit in Los Angeles. And I just, I can't really imagine my life now without theater. So <laughs> it's one of my favorite things. <laughs> Oh, that's so amazing. Um, and you have two sisters? That's that correct. Yeah. <laughs> one and older, one younger. You're in the middle. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that you have a beautiful quartet. It's called yeah. a semi quartet that yep. is with your sisters and your mother. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, can you? <laughs> I mean, I guess you were already singing when you were very, very little, all of you. Yes. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Yeah. My mom, um, when we were pretty young, used to teach us the parts to the choir songs that she was teaching her choirs. And she'd have us practice so that she could practice directing. And once she realized we were pretty good with harmony, she was like, well, we're going to start singing together. <laughs> we weren't all sold on the idea. <laughs> It was a way to kind of keep us busy and it's because we're, we're only girls I don't have any brothers my mom said we were very talkative and have lots of energy and so she was like if I could get you to sing you would wouldn't talk as much <laughs> <laughs> so she had us singing a lot <laughs> but yeah yeah say the gospel quartet we sing a lot in the Twin Cities and mostly at our church home which is Zion Baptist Church in North Minneapolis 
So because of my acting career, my older sister's acting career, we're not able to do as much anymore. But growing up, we sang a lot all over. <laughs> Wow, that's beautiful. I, I, wow, that is really amazing. I hope you were singing with the quartet. Yeah. Um, uh, and tell me about some of the things you've done in the Twin Cities, what um, theater productions um, do you ha had an impact on your career or your, how you, like, what was your favorite show or mm -hmm. what? It's a very meaningful experience. Yeah, definitely. So my very first show in the Twin Cities um, was Disney's High School Musical at the Children's Theater Company. And um, that, I say like every show was life-changing, but that show really was life-changing. The, the people I met, the experience I had, um, it was a pretty long run. We started rehearsals around the holidays and then ran until springtime and then the show, the show sold out before it was even cast. And so it was just, we, they kept extending, it kept extending and then finally closed the show and brought it back that same summer. Um, and just like having that experience, having to be very disciplined because I was in college at the same time um, at the U, it just, again, was, it just showed me how the arts played such a major role in my life. And like, I, I knew I would probably go into some type of artistic field, but I wasn't sure what. Um, and that performance and that experience like solidified me as a performer. I just felt like this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to do. And I like teaching and, you know, I like writing and, but being on stage is what I absolutely love. And um, so, yeah, that was like a pretty life-changing <laughs> moment in my career. And then uh, last year, I did a show called School Girls, um, or the African Mean Girls play. It's uh, written by Jocelyn Beale, and it was directed uh, by Shay Cage, who's another um, uh, Twin Cities performer. She's kind of a mainstay in the Twin Cities theater community um, and film as well. Um, and that was incredible. That was the first show that I had done that was set on the continent of Africa. So I spoke with a um, dialect. We were, we were in Ghana. And um, it was just amazing to be in a cast of all African-American women. The director was an African-American woman. <laughs> it's just so mind-blowing and um, a real like sisterhood experience. And I had always enjoyed backstage and being in dressing rooms, but that like even more so. Like, we just had so much in common and we were all around the same age. <laughs> just It was really, really amazing. And, and it was that production that helped me realize how important it is to tell stories that reflect my community and that reflect, you know, my experiences. And even though I'm not um, from the continent of Africa, my experiences are very similar to the ladies in the play. And um, so, yeah, that just it inspired me to write a little bit and it's to kind of seek out more shows where I can tell more African stories. Um, and that, yeah, that was pretty life changing. <laughs> they all are so life changing. <laughs> Uh, that sounds really powerful, like how you felt like you could really connect, yes. connect with your, yeah, roots um, through that play. It sounds yeah. like there were similar experiences in, um, wow, that's, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. So I hope you will keep uh, doing stage work as well. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I know you're very busy and um, how can you talk about how your acting has influenced your teaching and yeah. what you uh, bring to your teaching at MacPhail? Can Absolutely. you talk about your experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I am a um, teaching artist in the Sing Play Learn department, which was formerly the early childhood music department. That was our name then. Um, and so we are uh, about six weeks is our youngest student and eight years old is our oldest student. So that spectrum in there of the early stages of life. Um, and I really didn't have a goal of being a music teacher because I didn't have a degree in music. I was like, you know, no, I don't think this is a good fit for me. <laughs> but once I got into it, a friend of mine, Amanda, who's also a coworker at McPhail, um, she encouraged me to um, interview and apply for the job. and. Um, I got hired as an assistant and I really started to understand like how important the arts 
art to me and, and also sharing the arts with younger people. Um, and, you know, before that, I, I did the arts wherever. I, you know, performed wherever for adults, for children. Um, but once I started working at McPhail, I understood even more how much education was a big part of my life um, and how, how much I wanted to use the arts to help people. Um, and so I'm actually currently in school now, and I'm going back, um, getting some of my music generals, um, and then we'll eventually apply at, the, at Augsburg for their um, music therapy program. Um, and that dream was really like born at McPhail. Like when I came to McPhail, that was the first time I had ever heard of a music therapist and got to see what they were doing and see what their classes were like. And, um, and then actually having experiences where I take, you know, some of our music curriculum into shelters and high risk preschools and seeing the effects of the arts on people who are dealing with traumatic stress. And um, it, it just blew my mind. I just, I couldn't get over like, you know, you, you can go and you can become a doctor, or you can become a lawyer, or you can become a politician, and you can make change on those levels. But then you can also do like the soul work and you can make change in people's hearts and minds. And um, I believed in that before, but I got to really see it in play once I started working at McPhail. Um, so again, it was just life changing. That's like my motto for today. <laughs> but it's good. Wow. I, I love it. <laughs> It's really amazing. That's really touched my heart as well. Um, how your, you know, personal person to person connection can really change one's life. That's really beautiful. And how you felt the calling to go into that field and want to yeah. study. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Wow. Um, do, do you have... Um, any messages for uh, the viewers of K through 12 online classes? Absolutely, absolutely. I say stick with music, even if you don't plan on going into a professional career in music, um, it's so helpful. It, you know, music helps us with math and it you know, helps us with problem solving and um, even just being creative and imaginative helps us with stress relief. and. Uh, especially during the time that we're in right now, use music as much as you can. I, I like Netflix and I love reading books, but sometimes I just have to sing a song and sometimes I just need to strum a guitar and feel the vibrations. And um, so I say definitely take this time to embrace it. Um, maybe try something you've never tried before, a genre you've never tried before. Um, the sky's the limit when it comes to music. That's the beautiful thing. We're stuck in home um, because we're keeping people safe, but there's so many amazing things that we can do in our home and in our community that don't require us to go anywhere or to be in groups, you know, <laughs> and we can do this, we can Zoom and, and we can make music that way. And so I'd say, yeah, really explore music and see everything that there is to see while you have this time. Mm -hmm. I know you have uh, learned how to play the guitar and ukulele. Um, can you tell me about how that started, how you started those instruments? You know, definitely. So I, um, when I started off being a um, teacher at McPhail, I didn't play any instruments, I could, but I had no formal training. Um, and Amanda Breidinger, again, my coworker, she's my friend, um, Amanda suggested that I pick up the ukulele. And she was like, it's really easy. You just, just learn like two or three chords and then you can play hundreds of songs. And for children, that's all you really need. If you can play Twinkle and Wheels in the Book, and uh, so I started off, you know, just I, I bought a really cheap ukulele um, and then learned like the C chord and the G chord <laughs> and was putting them together. And um, it's a it's a much more like rewarding or um, it's like instant gratification. You right away start to develop um, the skills you need to strum and the skills you need to change chords. And whereas the guitar and the piano take a little bit more time. Um, so I, I fell in love with the ukulele. I really do enjoy playing it, even just for fun. But in particular with kids, because it um, is a good uh, range for their voice. So I can play pretty high notes on the ukulele and 
uh, that encourages little ones to sing more because they have those really nice high notes um, when they're su super little like that. Uh, but yeah, I enjoy it. I even play a little bit with my family quartet. This summer we sang outside in Afton, Minnesota um, for an event called Singing in the Trees. And I brought my ukulele out and that was the first time I had ever done it. <laughs> and I was like so shy and embarrassed. <laughs> my mom was like, come on, just play, just play. So we sang a couple songs with my uke and it went really well and it was well received and and you and I actually did a concert where I did um, a little bit of uke playing as well <laughs> at the experience, which is super, super fun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, I had a really good time. Um, Ivory and I and um, Zeb and Julie John. Yes. And we, we did a... Uh, um, we made a band to sing songs from all over the world and yeah. we got to play at the children's hospital and that was really fun so awesome. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, i hope well we can do something like that again yes. soon yeah me too <laughs> um and um uh, we also sang together um for the ELCA, which is Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, their women's assembly yes. at the convention center. It's yes. really fun too. Um, yeah, I hope we get to work together again. Um, I'm gonna go see your shows and um, I'd love to watch you teach uh, Sing, Play, Learn as well. Yes. Yeah, it's a great program and um, I know my uh, my son did sing play learn when he was little. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm a little bit familiar with how the um, program goes. And yeah. um, I, I saw you a little bit doing the online teaching of that, and that was really <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Are you, doing, are you doing some of that now that we are quarantined? Or yeah. yeah? Yeah, but I'm doing a little bit less live classes. I actually just teach them every now and then, uh, just because of the age group that we work with, screen time is not ideal. So we try not to do too much, but I've been recording a lot of videos for my partnerships and my classes, and then I send them out. Um, I try to like leave a little message in there so they know it's really me. <laughs> it's not a TV show if you're a teacher. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm, I'm really missing being in person with my students. I really do miss it, but I'm glad we have the technology and are able to reach. You know, I have students that are in uh, KMS, so that's, you know, miles and miles away. Um, KMS is Kirkhoven, Murdoch, and Sunbird, a town, I think it's in the southeast or southwest part of Minnesota. Um, and it's really awesome. I've only been there in person once, um, and that was actually before I was a teacher. Um, but it just, it's so awesome to me that I can be in Minneapolis downtown while students are in their classroom in, you know, Kirkhoven or, you know, Sunbird, and they're getting music and we're there looking at each other and we're discussing things. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome. I, I love that we have this opportunity to reach people and, you know, no matter the, how far away we are. And, uh, that's something I super value about McPhail, that we're really big into online. Even before the pandemic happened, we were big into online learning, and uh, I think we're kind of ahead of the game on it, so that makes me really happy, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, that's so true. Yeah, I'm really glad we had that opportunity to start teaching online yeah. uh, several years before this situation came. Um, I think the transition was a little bit smoother and yes. um, we can still learn as we go. We can learn, there's more technology definitely, yes. but um, it's great to be able to reach more people this way. Yeah. 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 Further. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm wondering if you would like to share some music? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. That's good. I have my ukulele here. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, play it. I gotta move my, have my coffee cup ready, so <laughs> move that out of the way. I'm gonna play a song that we did actually at our um, world music concert song <laughs> called um, Down by the Riverside.
gonna lay down my burden down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna lay down my burden down by the riverside and study war no more. Well, I ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Study that comes up right away that will give you a description of uh, McPhil's online learning music at home. Um, you can click the learn more button or um, take me to the page button um, and it'll show you uh, kind of what we have to offer. Um, and things are constantly changing as we all know. Um, it's kind of unpredictable right now what it's going to look like two weeks from now, a month from now. Um, but we're going to stay on top of making sure that the arts are kept alive and that the music keeps going. Um, and yeah, and I guess I just want to also just thank you, Momo, because it, it feels like you are um, constantly pushing um, your people that are your friends and you know, your loved ones to the forefront. And that's just incredible to me. Like you're, you're an amazing advocate um, and also just a brilliant musician, brilliant music teacher. Um, but it's just also so cool to have you as a friend. So I'm thankful that we got to have this time together and <laughs> have this interview. Like I have to interview you next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. I bring you. Oh, I just love watching you blossom and into your stage career as well as your teaching and then now going into music therapy. And I want to um, keep cheering you on and your endeavors. That's so beautiful that you are so beautiful inside and out. And uh, yeah, I think you touch so many people um, through your music and just your person as a person. And I've been blessed by your presence. So I'm and also by, I'm very inspired through this uh, interview um, from what you've told me about each of your um like this big moment in your theater career and then this big moment um in your teaching and also how you um were inspired to pursue music therapy so yeah. thank you for all of those you. Uh, <laughs> and um yeah, um, that's that's good. We we should encourage others, especially this uh, K through twelve Minnesota 
program's been funded already, so anybody can mm -hmm. sign in and take a class. And yeah. I think that's a very, very nice opportunity yeah. for everyone. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. Something to mention that it is free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, so you, and you get our regular faculty. It's not, you know, like student teachers or anything like that. It's the, the normal faculty that are there year round. Um, and there are some great programs to some things that were just created for this program that, you know, we hadn't been doing at McPhil before and will hopefully continue. So there's like a beatboxing class. Check that out, you know, <laughs> with Carnage. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I saw a little bit of it. Um, I did a class about breathing uh, and uh, vocal warm ups, and yes. then this week uh, on intervals. And uh, I wonder, maybe uh, Ivory, you could offer like audition techniques for musical theater. That'd be great. <laughs> I think that would be a great class that you could offer. <laughs> yeah, okay, and I need to ask Rocky. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> or like intro to gospel singing. <laughs> I'm just like, making requests now. <laughs> but yeah, there's so much you can offer. So I would encourage you to do that too. If you have time in your studies, I know you are very busy. But yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank great. you. So now we're only two minutes away. That sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Yeah. Uh, so are, are you doing your work uh, study right now, currently? Um, this semester, I'm not um, in for the spring, or I don't have classes for the spring, but this summer I start back up. So I took a break so that I could do a show in January, um, January and February with Frank Theater. Um, and that just, just finished right before the quarantine started. So we locked down like the day after um, we closed the show. Um, but then this summer, I'll start doing some of my psychology classes that I haven't done before. So um, intro to psych, abnormal psych, and then lifespan um, development. And I'm so excited for that. I'm ready to like start figuring out how the brain works and how you know human behavior and so I'm I'm looking forward to that part of my studies. Yeah, that sounds amazing. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You tell me all about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get coffee for real outside of Zoom one day when uh, this is all. <laughs> no, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna come. We're gonna make it. We are. <laughs> We'll get through it. Yes. yes. I'm yeah. 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 Take care. You too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>